The free rider problem occurs when individuals benefit from a resource, service or public good without contributing to its cost. This happens because public goods, such as clean air, national defence or public parks, are available to everyone regardless of whether they help pay for them. Since people know they can still use these resources, even if they do not contribute, some choose not to participate in funding or maintaining them. This can lead to shortages, overuse or underfunding, making it difficult to provide these goods efficiently. Now let's look at an example of the free rider problem. A common example of the free rider problem is public transportation. In some cities, buses or trains operate on an honour system where passengers are expected to pay but are not always required to show proof of payment. Some individuals may take advantage of this system by riding without purchasing a ticket, knowing that they will still reach their destination without contributing to the service's cost. If too many people do this, the transportation system may struggle to cover its expenses, leading to service cuts or higher fares for paying passengers. Now let's look at some causes of the free rider problem. One cause of the free rider problem is the nature of public goods. Since these goods are non-excludable, meaning no one can be prevented from using them, people may feel there is no need to contribute if they can still access the benefits. Another cause is a lack of enforcement. If there are no penalties for not contributing, individuals may decide it is easier to rely on others to cover the costs. Additionally, some people may believe their contribution is too small to make a difference, leading them to withhold their support because they assume others will fund the resource anyway. Now let's look at some effects of the free rider problem. One effect of the free rider problem is the underfunding of public goods. When too many people choose not to contribute, essential services may not receive enough support to function properly. This can lead to the deterioration of public infrastructure, such as poorly maintained roads or reduced public safety services. Another effect is an unfair burden on those who do contribute. If only a fraction of the population pays for a service that benefits everyone, those who contribute may feel frustrated or overburdened, which can lead to a decrease in voluntary contributions over time. Now let's look at some solutions to the free rider problem. One solution to the free rider problem is government intervention. Governments can impose taxes or fees to ensure that everyone contributes to public goods, such as through mandatory funding for education or road maintenance. Another solution is implementing incentives or penalties. For example, requiring proof of payment for public services, offering discounts for early contributions, or imposing fines for non-payment can encourage participation. A third solution is fostering a sense of community responsibility. If people recognise the long-term benefits of contributing and feel a sense of shared responsibility, they may be more willing to support public goods voluntarily.